Hi, my name is Nick Austin. I am presenting on Japanese internment during World War II and the effects it had on the assimilation of Buddhism into Western society. On February 19th, 1942, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066. This allowed the military to relocate 120,000 Japanese Americans into internment camps. Most of these individuals, which included women and children, were incarcerated without a trial. While this forced migration is very well known, less analysis has been placed on the role religious affiliation played during this time. At the time, a large percentage of Japanese Americans were Buddhists. FBI and War Relocation Authority targeted Buddhists, assuming that Buddhists were more likely to support Japan over the United States in the war. Buddhist priests were especially targeted as they were seen to be even less capable of assimilating into American culture. As a result, Buddhist priests were rounded up first and considered known dangerous Group A suspects. In fact, the first person to be arrested was a Buddhist priest. This targeting of Buddhists was fueled by general prejudice towards the Japanese and the view of Buddhism at the time. At the time, Buddhism was not well known or understood among the general public of the United States. Buddhism was viewed as more of a cult, shrouded in mystery, rather than a true, bona fide religion, on par with Christianity. Buddhists handled their internment in a variety of ways. News throughout the internment camps that Buddhists were being treated less favorably than Christians. This targeting resulted in many Buddhists converting to Christianity in order to seem more American and to avoid further scrutiny in internment camps. However, Buddhism was still alive and well in the internment camps. Many turned to Buddhism as a refuge from the struggles that they had faced in the camps. Once in the camps, many turned to Buddhist teaching on suffering as a way to understand and cope with the sense of betrayal and confusion derived from being imprisoned by their own government. In the camps, many Buddhists continued to perform rituals, honoring their ancestors, performing marriages, and even erecting monuments to honor the dead. While Buddhists in the camp were able to practice, this was a period where American Buddhists saw significant changes. As Japanese Americans tried to prove their loyalty to their country to possibly end their incarceration, many changes were made to the way Buddhism was practiced. In order to look more like a religion that the United States was familiar with, many Christian elements were adapted in order to make Buddhism more palatable and less foreign. Buddhists in internment camps met on Sundays and created hymns that Buddhist elements, with Buddhist elements, imitating traditional Christian hymns. Furthermore, the swastika, which was a symbol that was widely used in Buddhism, which predated the Nazis, was completely removed and replaced by the symbol of the Dharma wheel. Even the name was changed. In 1944, the Jodo Sinshu mission was renamed to the Buddhist Churches of America. All these efforts led to the Americanization of Buddhism, an effort to normalize the religion. The changes made during internment completely altered the landscape of Buddhism in the United States. Internment camps, while horrible, forced American Buddhism, Buddhists to conform to American culture, creating a form of Buddhism that fit into what the United States citizens expected from a religion. This was vital in changing the perception that Buddhist was a cult solidifying Buddhism as a true religion in the eyes of many Americans that may have been more skeptical if changes were not made. This set Buddhism up for expansion into the United States. Buddhism was presented as a religion that had aspects that were more familiar to Americans, which in turn created more converts. In the years after World War II, Buddhism in the United States surged due to an increase in the number of converts and factors such as Asian immigration reopening in 1965. It is clear to see that if internment did not happen, these changes would not have occurred. While there were other factors, such as an increase in immigrants that practiced Buddhism, this only increased the number of people in the United States that practiced Buddhism. While the changes made during internment built foundations for an increase in conversion of the American people, these changes allowed Buddhism to be sustained in the United States, rather than just increasing the number of practicing Buddhists. It is clear that the incarceration of thousands due to war hysteria was essential in the spread of Buddhism and its longevity in the United States.